good morning children welcome back to our online classes we have started with chapter number 2 sexual reproduction in flowering plants in which we have studied about male gametophyte about female gametophyte and today we will study about pollination so let us start with the topic pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of the stem to the receptive stigma of the carpel or pistil flowering plants have evolved an amazing array of adaptations adaptations to achieve pollination and there are different types of pollination depending upon the source of pollen grains the first type is the self pollination self pollination which is autogamy okay and it is the kind of pollination achieved within the same flower the pollen grains from the anther of a flower are transferred to the stigma of the same flower example wheat rice pea etc almost all the cleistogamous flowers are invariably autogamous as there is no chance of cross pollination now you may have question what are Clistogamous flowers. Clistogamous flowers are the flowers which are closed, and their anthers and stigma lie close to each other. They do not open at all. Example: viola, commonly known as pansy; oxalis, mirabilis, pomelina. and this flowers produces a short seed set in the absence of pollinators why because they do not open so there will be release of the pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the same flower and when the pollen grains of the anther falls on the stigma of the same flower it is called self pollination it is also called autogamy now let us study about gitanogamy it is a kind of pollination where the pollen grains from the anther of a flower are transferred to the stigma of another flower born on the same plant but at different branches okay flowers are different but the flowers are present on the same plant that is known as gitanogamy it usually occurs in plants which show monoecious condition example cucurbita it is functionally a type of cross pollination involving a pollinating agent but genetically it is similar to autogamy since pollen grains come from the same plant i hope this is clear now the next type is xenogamy okay before we move to xenogamy let us understand what is chesmogamous flower chesmogamous flowers are the flowers which open with exposed sex organs on this pollen grains from another flower can land on the stigma as well example mirabilis okay now let us continue with the xenogamous or the cross pollination it involves the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of one plant to stigma of another plant this is the only type of pollination which brings genetically different types of pollen grains to the stigma during pollination example is papaya maize etc
Now, we will study about adaptations for cross pollination. We will study about adaptations for cross pollination. or outbreeding devices children continued self pollination leads to chances of inbreeding depression Thus, flowering plants have developed many devices to discourage self-pollination and to encourage cross-pollination. And this include, number one is dipogamy. In some plant species, the receptivity of stigma and pollen release is not synchronized. That is, often the pollen grain is released before the stigma becomes receptive or stigma becomes receptive before the release of pollens. This condition is known as dipogamy, where there is no synchronization of receptivity of stigma and pollen grain release. The second type of outbreeding device or the adaptation for cross-pollination is heterostyly. Heterostyly. In some other uh, species, the anther and stigma are placed at different positions. So that the pollen cannot come in contact with the stigma of same flower. This condition is called heterostyly. And this both conditions that is dipogamy and heterostyly, it prevent autogamy. The third outbreeding device is self-incompatibility. This is the third device to prevent inbreeding. It is a genetic phenomenon of preventing the pollen from fertilizing ovules by the same flower by inhibiting pollen germination or pollen tube growth in the pistil. Okay. So it does not allow the pollen tube germination in the pistil. So this self incompatibility. The fourth one is declining or unisexuality declining or unisexuality effectively prevents self pollination it is the presence of unisexual flowers in plants that prevents autogamy but not ketonogamy. Example is castor, maize, etc. Right? Now the fifth one or the fifth outbreeding device is hercogamy. Hercogamy is seen in orchids where male or female sex organs themselves prove as a barrier to prevent self-pollination by some structural abnormalities. 
and the sixth one and the last one is diocese. Both autogamy and kittenogamy is prevented in several species like papaya. Where male and female flowers are present on different plants. That is, each plant is either male or female. That is, diocese. I hope this is clear. That is, adaptations for, for cross-pollination or outbreeding is clear to everyone. Now, we will study about the agents of pollination. As we have studied that in cross-pollination, there is transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of different flower present on different plant. So, there should be some agents. There is requirement of the agents for the transfer of pollen grains. Okay. So, the agents responsible for pollination in angiosperms are grouped into two main categories that is number one is the abiotic agents and the second one is the biotic agents. Abiotic agents like wind, water, and biotic agents are the animals. Further, okay, now uh, if the pollination takes place with the help of wind, then it is known as anemophily. If it takes with the help of water, it is known as hydrophily. And if it takes place with the help of animals, it is known as zoophily. There are different animals uh, which helps in the pollination like reptiles, example lizards, garden lizards, gecko. etc. Insects also help in the transfer of pollen grains. So they are the agents. Examples are the bees, moths, wasps, beetles, Butterflies, ants, etc. Birds also help in the transfer of pollen grains from anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower. Example, sunbird. Hummingbird, etc. <coughs> and even mammals help in the transfer of pollen grains. Example, lemur. arboreal, rodent, etc. 
Is this clear, children? To compensate for the chances of contact of pollen grains with stigma and associated loss of pollen grains, the plants have adopted various ways. Some of them are adaptation for wind pollination. Okay, the number one is adaptation for wind pollination. Wind pollination is also termed as anomophily. We have already studied in last slide. It is also known as anemophily. Okay, so It is the most common amongst abiotic pollinations and the adaptations of wind pollinated flowers are the flowers are small, colorless and nectarless. Wind pollinated flowers often have a single ovule in each ovary and numerous flowers packed into an inflorescence like in tessels of corn cob, that is stigma and stipe. The anthers are well exposed for the easy dispersal of pollen grains. Pollen grains are small, light, dry, dusty, non-sticky and sometimes even winged. The stigma are large, hairy and feathery or branched to catch the airborne pollen grains. Common examples of wind pollinated flowers are grasses, sugarcane, bamboo, coconut, etc. Now let us learn about, this was the first adaptation for wind pollination. Now we will learn about adaptation for water pollination. Which is also known as hydrophily. Water pollination, as I said, it is also termed as hydrophily. It is quite rare in flowering plants and is limited to about 30 genera, mostly monocotyledons. The adaptations of flower, water pollinated flowers are, it is very common in lower plant groups such as algae, bryophytes and pteridophytes. Flowers are small, colorless, inconspicuous, odorless and nectarless. The stigmas are long and sticky. Example, Velisnelia, Hydrilla, and Zostera. That is sea grasses. In most of the water pollinated species, pollen grains are protected from getting wet by mucilaginous covering. Not all aquatic plants use water for pollination. In a majority of aquatic plants, the flowers emerge above the level of water and are pollinated by insects or wind as in land plants. Example, water hyacinth and water lily. In Velisneria, 
the female flowers reach the surface of water by a long stalk and male flowers or pollen grains are released onto the surface of water. They are then carried massively by water currents. In plants like Zostera or sea grasses, female flowers remain submerged in water and the pollen grains are released inside the water. In such species, pollen grains are long, ribbon-like and are carried passively inside the water to reach stigma and achieve pollination. The third type of adaptation is adaptation for insect pollination. Adaptations for insect pollination which is also known as entomophily. The adaptations of insect pollinated flowers are insect pollinated flowers are large, colorless, fragrant and rich in nectar. A number of flowers are clustered into an inflorescence to make them conspicuous where the flowers are small. Flowers have nectar glands and are highly fragrant to attract insects. The surface of pollen greens is sticky due to exine layer and stigma is sticky due to mucilaginous layer. To sustain animal visits, flowers have to provide rewards. Nectar and pollen grains are floral rewards for the insect pollinators. In some species, floral rewards are to provide safe place for laying eggs. Example in Amorphophallus. The tallest flower about 6 feet in height. In plant like yucca, moth and the plant cannot complete their life cycles without each other. The moth deposits its egg in the locule of the ovary and the flower in turn gets pollinated by the moth. The lar larvae of the moth come out of the eggs as the seeds start developing. Many insects may consume pollen or the nectar without bringing about pollination. This floral visits are referred to as pollen nectar robots. Okay, it is referred to as pollen or nectar robbers. Why? Because they visit the flowers but they do not bring the pollination. They do not help in pollination. So they are called pollen or nectar robbers. So... That is all for today. In our next video, we'll be studying about pollen-pistol interaction. Thank you.